Hey guys and welcome to Rolling Line. Rolling Line is a VR first 3D model railway simulator. It uh, cost 15.49s on Steam. It's, it was released what in April 2018. Let's say it's VR first, which is why it looks like this. So you've got a little dot in the middle. So if you were playing in VR, that would be where your head's pointing. So let's have a look at a, a route made with it first. You can see it's, it's rather large. You can see the Brazilian flag down there because the game is actually uh, developed by a Brazilian uh, a guy or team, I'm not entirely sure. He does have a, a couple of other games out, I think five or six other games out, mostly in VR. Well, essentially, you start off with a room, a blank room, then you can um, build what you see. Now, to the bottom left, you'll see four squares. One's got an item in it, the second one I've got in my hand right now. Um, so it's number one, two, three, four. The tool we've got right now controls the train. You point it to the train, and then if you look at the bottom left, it says decrease speed, increase speed, and it tells you what the cue, uh, the key to do that. We're inside a train right now, you just aim at that controller at the train, or anywhere on the board, and press tab, and then you're inside. Um, I'd say it's controlling the train rather than actually driving the train. You um, you get those buttons which you can just press. It's a mouse button press. And it tells you the speed. You can exit and it will carry on. You can go and start up another train. Click on it again. I'll decrease the speed. I don't know why I did this, but I did. I think I wasn't sure where I was going. I think that was the reason. Now, warning, a lot of this video is... There's a lot of movement on this video because it is a VR game, so every mouse move is a, is a camera move. There's no easy way to do this. To actually look around, but to be honest, when you're playing, you don't notice. So it's just when you're watching, I think you probably notice more. Now I don't know how that bridge is. They they got a curved version of this bridge. Now later on, we're going to uh, build a very simple route like we've done previously. And uh, the only piece I saw there is straight, so there might be a way of curving, which I don't know of. But this is a very good looking board, isn't it? Look at that. Everything is modular, so you can... Even the vegetation you can actually uh, recolor. Now this is, this is the option screen. Because it's VR, you actually walk up to a wall and actually then start clicking on things. So what we're going to do is go to post-processing. I'll switch it off back and there. Go to options. We're going to switch on depth of uh, field. I'm looking for it. And bloom. Just for a sec to see what it looks like. You can m mess about with the uh, the thresholds here and how, what it looks like. On the left, you just saw one of the uh, the drawers. Now that they house everything where you are. Now consider the depth of view here. I don't like this, uh, so we're going to keep it on for a second, but I just want to show that it has it. So if you're into this, then there you go, it's got it. Very quickly we're going to go back to there and actually switch all this off again. Here we walk over to it. Now, I like the idea you walk to this and you walk to the drawers to go and get things for the uh, train set, but also it's a bit cumbersome. It really uh, is meant for VR. If you, if you imagine you've got the VR helmet on and you're just walking around this pretend room, this virtual room. Now we're going to try ch crashing a train. Now what am I doing? I want to see if the if physics are actually in there to actually do it. So we set this one off. Now this one's going the wrong way, of course it is. So I have to reverse it instead. Look at the one at the back. It had some... Although it hasn't got any electric lines on top, they're actually uh, flashing. It's great. The sparks. It does come off, so yes, we do have some sort of physics uh, for crashes. Right, now, it, we're, we're going to build a board. So I've set up a new game, empty room. 
we'll try and put the table down. Now, as I say, warning, this is a lot of movement here. I'm going to pr probably edit bits of this out because it's, there's too much movement when I play this back. There's a bit too much movement. This is the drawer, so we're going to paint it all. Now, each of those drawers, top right, has the options of what they actually are, and bottom right is the uh, draw number. So if, it, if the type of thing's got more than one draw's worth in, you can go, this has got nine in, so you can press the arrow to just draw two, three, four, so that's trains. We go to tracks, that seems to be the first thing we should put in. See, every time you want to do something, you need to go back to that drawer. This is why I moved a drawer here. It's a tray at the moment, but there is a way to actually make it into a proper drawer so it fits underneath. I don't know how that how that works, but I've seen it done, so I know it's, it can happen. Possibly it's a table piece. I think that's most probable. You notice how it's not jerky when I'm moving this about? It's because the controls are completely different. Now, normally, you press the WASD keys to actually move left, right, up and down, up, forward and back. And then you use the mouse, um, I think it's the right hand button, and then move your mouse about to actually uh, different directions. Or is it just different directions? You don't have to hold the mouse about. But once you actually go onto the edit mode like that, the WAS, WASD do not do anything. And by the way, there are no key, uh, key rebinding. I've actually used a external bit of software to key rebind to the arrow keys, but uh, there's nothing in game to do that. Bottom left is always tells you what the uh, what you can do. So if you want to shift the track a different way, you can. Now what you saw there, and it was very quick. You've probably heard me say I don't like set pieces of track, uh, and I still don't really. But, this game, if, 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 if there's a way to do it right, this game does it right, because there's an auto-filler bit of track. So if you've got a gap you can't fill, you put, put that bit of track onto one end, and it, it finds the bit which it's meant to connect to, as long as they're not too far away, and it will connect to it. So, if there is a way of doing this type of track properly, this is the game which does it. I still prefer dynamic track, where you can just drag it to where you want it, I think that's much better, I always will. But, uh, Yeah, and what I'm trying to do here is get the right height, plus I'm also need to get the track around the corner. I was hoping you could just pull it upwards, but you can't. And that was that bridge I was saying that uh, he's got a curved one, whereas I can only see a straight one. Yeah, we're going to have to curve in. In a minute I'll work out. Because we can't go in a corner like that without an extra building, so it's, it's also a little bit too high like that. Yeah, we still can't get across, we can't get round, so we have to take that off. And I think I've worked out now, so I had a bit more tracking and a curving. Now, this trip to the draw, when we get to the scenery part, I'm going to cut all that out. I'm leaving it in now so you can actually see what you have to do. Right, so we've, we've added the curve in now. We've got over the top. It obviously won't float when we, when we get to the end. Now, I'm not very good at this game, but I'm just showing it off as I'm playing it. This is the first time I've actually made anything really with this uh, game. Now, bringing it down and up, that's a bit of a problem. I, I kept going up and down, up and down. So what I do in the end, I come from the other end, this end, and go round, all the way round. I get rid of that track, go round, and then end up, and then put in that uh, that extra bit of track, the, the one which can fit between two pieces. And that, that actually was a very nice curve on it. Now this bit, bit, back bit of track, I will just leave like that. There we go. We're going to use it again. Look, it's, it just made, it just connected it automatically. I am very happy with that. I don't remember that originally being in here. So I take it all that off. See, I come from this end. Now I use that one to actually uh, connect it up, which is much, much better. Now we've got to make it look like it's not floating. 
So we go in here. Now come back to controls again. Once you've gone into edit mode, your WSOD keys don't actually do anything. So to move out then, you have to hold the middle button and hold the right button down while moving. So that allows you to move left and right and turn left and right. A bit strange why well, they've omitted the, uh, the movement keys while you're in edit mode, but they have. Now, right now, what I'm trying to do is work out how we're going to do this bit. And it's not that. We will add some hills in. Now, you see, if you put, hold that white bit in the middle there, and then hold your mouse button on there and pull it upwards, it makes everything bigger. And if you copy one out next to it, it keeps the angle, it remembers the angle and everything. That's quite nice. Massive block there, and we're going to turn it down. Again, so you hold the mouse button on that round white thing, push forward, and uh, it'll get smaller. Pull back, it'll get bigger. I don't know why it was suddenly so big. Now, my first thought was to put some houses next to it and make it look like bricks. You can paint everything. But in the end, we put some hills there. I think time. Actually, this video is going to be about 30 minutes, but in actual fact, this took me three hours, I think, to make. Partially because it's my first time doing it. I'm sure if I actually spent more time with the game, I could come up with some you know, better. Our station. I don't see other station buildings. Um, ah, modding. I haven't got many mods installed, but subsequently I've had a good look, and they, there are some nicer hedges and a few nicer bits and rocks and things, so more real looking things on the download station. On oh, download station? <laughs> no, not on the download station. You won't find it there. On the Steam Workshop. Now, this is nice. What's this? It's all modular. And it will, if you connect a piece to it, it actually will connect to it. it. What I like about this game is it remembers the height. So if you put something on top of the platform, it'll put it on top of the platform. It won't put it through. So it's very nice. Look, all the platforms, you've got three colours there you can actually choose from. You, you need to pick up the paints first. And if you look down bottom left, I've got a three and four. So I put them in my pocket, effectively put these paint pocket, paint pots in my pocket and I'm just taking one out and using it. They're still, still there now. Then you just press three, get one out, put it away, put it, get the other out. So we, make it like a brick. So I'm making it brown to look like brick. Now, so I haven't used these uh, added mods for the, uh, for the hills and stuff, but they are there, and they look quite nice, so I've downloaded them, I might have another look at that. Now I didn't see a road, now again, on the mod, on, I said download station, on the Steam Workshop, um, I do see some roads on there, so you can download some roads. I buried these, they work. So, apart from I'd angled it slightly badly here, I lower it down, it works, it's fine. This is good enough area to put a few, a few little houses in. Because everything's modular, you can pretty much build what you want. You can resize anything. The little, like for the houses, for instance, they don't have windows, so you can add windows on yourself. You'll see that in a moment. I'll just put some basic windows on just to show you that it can be done. 
as much as this is a VR game, and you, you can see it's quite janky as you move, it does feel quite comfortable to play. If it, the only thing I, I, I wish it had was key rebinding, because I'm left-handed, so a lot of the keys on the left-hand side of the keyboard, the mouse clicks are, are done really for a right-handed person. And so, so it feels a little, a little awkward, but the, some other games I've played certainly are much worse than this. It didn't feel as natural as this. So overall, I think thought has been put into this. As you can see, you can add little windows in and... This church is a bit basic. Lucky you can download one I found you on. <laughs> which just looks a bit nicer. I tried painting it, it just goes, well, the whole lot just goes the same color, it's not multicolor. Some of the things are multicolor, so you can just, you can have uh, various things like, uh, oh, it's jankiness, yes. There we go, I paint it and the whole lot paints. But these are multicolor, so I mean, a little palette comes up and you can choose which colors you want. And that adds a, does add a different dimension to things, it really does. I just wanted um, dark rouge, really. Oh, oh, yeah. It felt awkward doing it moving. I think it felt awkward at the same speed. The problem is I can't, I can't show you the normal speed. It'd be five hours, well, it'd be two and a half hours watching this video. Now those hills can be painted the same colour as the uh, ground. Now, it takes me a minute to actually find the colours of the ground. In terms of these trees, they're, they're very, very poly, but at least they can be recolored. Re you can make them look at individual. So I, I keep finding them. I do find the original colour. Oh, the flickering. Will I keep this bit of the video? I don't know. We'll see. It's not likely this game will be on the channel again because it's it's not very it's not very good for YouTube. But uh, it is quite fun to play. The fact that you can build everything, and for fifteen pound forty nine, I think it's a very good price. Yeah, you got to remember this is a VR game first, and if you got if you got a Rift, Oculus Rift or something. It, play some VR. It's, it's it's great fun. I do have a as I said, I got. I, I do have one video of me playing it actually uh, with a riff right at the beginning. I don't own that anymore, unfortunately. But it's even much, it's even more movement on there. But I remember using your hand to actually do things, and it's a lot of fun. I felt it was a bit boring over here, so I had a few more hills and things. I think if I had more time, I would, that back bit of board, a lot more track. I like the fact you can put this grass near what I like the fact you can actually recolor it. So I add a little bit of uh, fencing at the back here. Overall, the game gave me a smile on my face. It's not a sim... Is it a simulation? I don't think it's a simulator. You couldn't call it that in any sort of respect, but it's a, it's a fun game. And it does do what it's supposed to do. It, it, you can create a little model railway. Right, so we're to the end now. I, I placed three trains on there. You'll see me start one off, but I, I put them all at the same speed. Now, I think it's... One mashes into the other, so we're going to lose one carriage later on. I think that one. I think it ends up with one carriage. One unit. Let's go with a steam loco. I was hoping you could actually paint the, the locos, but I don't think you can, so... I didn't think you would be able to the modern ones. It says... This is the mod, mod uh, draw, but it's not. It's just it's the uh, recolor draw. So these are standard carriages. So here we go. This is what we made. It's very simple. But I think it looks nice. You can walk around it just like you would with a proper model railway. Uh, 
And as I say, I've, I've just noticed um, that you can actually download better quality, uh, sort of real looking vegetation and rocks and things. So if you wanted to use those, that would uh, certainly improve the look of it if you wanted to do that. I think it's highly stylized with the, uh, the vegetation lines. I quite like it. And you can, as you can see, it's very smooth, the, uh, the animations. We're doing 60 FPS easily on here. So it seems to be reasonably optimised. Putting better quality vegetation, I don't know what that would do to it. Remember, the more mods you get, the the less frame that you're probably going to end up with. But if you're looking for a model railway game, this should be one which you'll think you should think about. It's, it's, is it a game I play every day? Probably not. But is a game I will come back to, and I have come back to. So, is it worth the £15.49? Yes, it is. Most certainly is. Um, modders are slowly coming to us. When I first came, looked at this game, there weren't... It, I don't think they had proper modern support. It does now. So, and now there are engines, there are different assets. There's a Flying Scotsman now you can download. I've, I've just noticed, I've just downloaded it. It's not, um, it's not in the video, because I didn't know you could. But time flew by while I was making this, so yeah, I, I recommend the game. And the movement you get when you're building, you really won't notice that when you're actually building it yourself. Watching it certainly, it's, it's noticeable, but actually building yourself, you don't really notice it. Ooh, straight through the fence there. You can walk up and down inside the train as well, which is quite nice. But that is it. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to try to put a few more showcases like this on the channel. I think they're quite fun to do. But as I say, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And if you press that ding-dong bell button, you know what it does. See you next time. Bye-bye.